Now, Michelle Obama's Becoming is headed for new chapters. According to the Associated Press, Penguin Random House announced on Wednesday that the former First Lady's multi-million selling memoir will be released in a young reader's edition. It also will finally be coming out as a paperback. More than two years after it was published, Becoming has sold more than 10 million copies worldwide. Both books have uh, March 2nd release dates, and the young reader's edition is for ages 10 and up. And it includes an introduction from Obama. One thing I wanted to add, you guys know I am all about letting you guys know I am from the south side of Chicago. Okay, oh, I love talk it. it. Talk it. Now, you know, Michelle Obama is from the south side of Chicago as well. Um, and so she said about this book, she said growing up on the south side of Chicago, that basically her parents always kept it straight with her. They never sugarcoated anything um, because they knew um, they knew that we could handle it. Her parents knew that they could handle it and they wanted to give them that, she wanted to give that same respect to her readers in the book. Um, and one other thing I wanted to add, you know, if I could just be transparent with you guys growing up I was not the hugest reader like I'm okay with saying that now in my X amount of years I just wasn't the biggest reader so I'm really happy that Michelle Obama is pouring into the younger generation because she has such a great big presence for the black community um, of all ages like every girl every black girl loves Michelle Obama like yeah. I just everyone does and so I'm just really happy that she's pouring into you know the the young uh, the young minds you know Definitely. and I just I just love yeah. that because I just didn't have a, a, a natural passion for reading I don't know if you guys but I just didn't I could listen to the radio, but I didn't just like love, 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 love reading. So I'm happy she's doing this. Yeah, I agree. I think it's cool. Just kind of what you're talking about, like how she is a big role model. Yes. And I think we had a lot of role models. Like we, we got to grow up with Oprah and yeah. we did have a lot of role models. We did. It also would have been even cooler to also have Michelle Obama. Okay. And I love that, you know, that young ones now because I think she's a role model for us as adults yes. and so it's cool that you know kids get to see Michelle and Barack yes. and what they've done for the, the country and, and just being in the, by just simply being in that position honestly yeah. Brooke, I, if I was oh, I'm sorry I'm sorry Romy uh, no go ahead I, no I, I was just I, gonna I, say if I was 10 if I was like 10 years old right now 10 or 11 I feel like this would be something that would motivate me to be like I want to get Michelle Obama's book I love her and I want to read it you know so I'm just I really love this well she is our first lady right yes. and if you think about uh, we honored her this weekend my radio station here Los Angeles, one of the first people we honored for Black History Month, along with Nipsey Hussle. That's yes. right, download the app. Our, Beyonce. No, Romeo, our radio station. That's okay. right. Hey, there you go. <laughs> but when you think about her, you think about respect, trust, love. Michelle Obama is all of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? She's a winner. And uh, look, Barack, you got a winner right there. Yes. Man. Trust he me. Knows. <laughs> he knows. <Yeah>. He definitely <laughs> knows. And speaking of first ladies, Michelle Obama thanked Dr. Jill Biden for a delicious mm -hmm. surprise, a basket filled with veggies from the White House garden that she helped plant as first lady in 2009. Obama expressed gratitude to the new first lady in a Tuesday Instagram message posting a photo of the leafy green stuffed care package that she described as beautiful. <laughs> Obama broke ground on the vegetable garden on the White House lawn, uh, South Lawn, nearly 12 years ago as part of her initiative on childhood healthy eating. The then First Lady was reportedly committed to preserving the garden. She penned a book in 2011 about the effort called American Grown, the story of the White House kitchen, garden, and gardens across America. Uh, I'll tell you right now, um, again, as we speak about Michelle Obama and what she's done, there was one point where there was a poll last year saying 70 percent wanted her to be the VP during mm. that time, right? Mm -hmm. But what she's done as far as obesity, speaking on behalf of that and how we can eat better and how our kids can eat healthy, she's done so much, so I applaud her on that. I love this. What did you guys think about, you know, well, I was reading uh, a lot of comments on Twitter and they were kind of just like not really blown away by the veggies, but I'm a vegetarian. You know, I've been a vegetarian for 11 years. So this was like a steak for me. Like I was like, wow, this is like all of my favorite things in this basket. I, and you, I'm just you, glad Trump didn't turn that down. I, you know what? That's a good thought. That's yeah. a good thought. But, you know, Jill Biden and um, Michelle Obama, they've had a long history. They've attended shows. They've went over overseas with each other. They've done, you know, support each other with their books and things like that they have a, such a lovely friendship and I mean I'm not at all surprised that Jill did this for Michelle Obama and I really love um, I think that it made uh, Michelle Obama feel still included in the White House you know like I feel like she was there for eight years so I feel like this really made her still feel like okay something that I started you know that's still mine yeah. so yeah. I love I that she did that because it's so important to her and I you know I like that you pointed that out Romeo people were nervous yeah. like are they gonna tear up the garden mm. it's gonna be and the garden was you know pretty quiet quiet through these last four years talk yeah. about it, was, but, it <laughs> but it's there yeah. it was faring it was it was it was going well mm -hmm. and so I do think I think it's a cute gift yes yeah, very nice definitely.
All right, today in Black History, we remember author and Lucy, who became the first black student to attend the University of Alabama. Lucy's first class was 65 years ago today, Friday, February 3rd, 1956. Riots broke out on the campus after her first day, and a mob of more than a thousand men attacked the car Lucy was in. She had to actually be escorted in a car to and from her classes. Threats were made against her life. The university president's home was stoned. You know, these riots at the university were what was to date the most violent post Brown anti integration demonstration. Hmm. After the riots, the university suspended Lucy from school because her own safety was a concern. Take a look at this. What brought about these actions, I feel, is that uh, lawless elements outside the campus set themselves over and above the law. Their actions brought great discredit to our nation. All right, so what you're looking at right there is court cases that happened. It's just like a little bit of the trial happening after she was suspended. You know, Lucy was known and described as the architect of desegregating Alabama's education systems. And attorneys for Lucy and the NAACP actually helped build a lawsuit against the university because they believe the school helped the white mob by not having protection for her and preventing Lucy from attending class. By the way, that legal team included those two men there, Arthur Shores and Thurgood Marshall. The team engaged in a series of legal proceedings lasting from 1953 until 1955. They ended up losing that court battle, but while Lucy felt defeated from being expelled and then losing the court case, Marshall thought differently. And, you know, that's important because he would, of course, become the first African-American Supreme Court justice in 1967. He wrote Lucy a letter saying, whatever happens in the future, remember, for all concerned, that your contribution has been made toward equal justice for all Americans and that you have done everything in your power to bring this about. Today, we also celebrate Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. It is her birthday. Presley has served as the U.S. Representative for Massachusetts 7th Congressional District since 2019. Her district includes the northern three quarters of Boston, most of Cambridge, Cambridge, parts of Milton, all of Chelsea, Everett, Randolph, and Somerville. I want to go back to Lucy there, author and Lucy. I think that's a hard pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. That, listen, you have changed the world, although this has ruined your life. Mm. And so many people that have come before us have had to stomach that. Do you so know true. what I mean? Yeah. The bravery during that time. Can you imagine the mm. black woman doing that during that time, knowing mm -hmm. what could happen, yeah. seeing the things that happened? Well, those were riots. Those were protesting. And, and it was done as if they were having a party out on mm. the streets. Right. right? Not fair. I just want to say that, you know, I really love the Black Report, not even just because I'm here, but I really <laughs> love the Black Report so much because these are facts. You know, I've even learned uh, just a little bit from that read right there, Brooke, something that I didn't even know, a little extra piece added onto that story. So I just really think that this is a great space where we can just give that extra news that you're not mm -hmm. going to get anywhere else. So I'm really, uh, really, I really love, I love it here. Okay, clip that. Okay, clip <laughs> that little piece. And the promo. And okay, that back. The promo. Right. I love it here. Okay. <laughs> also, I just want to shout out uh, Sean Kingston's birthday today, as well as it's National girls and women in sports day it's been a lot of uh clubhouses about that as well uh so taking it to our youtube soulmates uh dear yvette she says this panel is beautiful and amazing thank, thank you yvette you. i feel the Appreciate same way uh, jersey club says this is my first time chatting with fox soul this is good stuff okay thank you for joining us uh, a couple of our other soulmates says i wish i could be a vegetarian i tried it only lasted one week let me tell you i was a pescatarian for a year then then that's how i got it only lasted it, one day you me. tried and that's it all lasts. important is that you were willing it's to try level. Okay. it literally it lasts three hours with me. Not oh, even my day. gosh. I can I can help you. It's levels to it. Uh, Dina Jackson, she agrees with Romeo. She said, Romeo, you're right. Not sure about what, but she just agrees with you, Romeo. Okay? <laughs> I and love then, that you and, picked that. Though. Listen, and then one more person said, <laughs> Romeo, it. you just took the words right out of my mouth. I thought they were going to uh, tear that garden up. So I'm assuming mm -hmm. it was about the garden. But everyone just yes. seems to believe and, uh, you know, but agrees with Romeo But it's nice to hear today. that you're right. I know. You, you know, know yeah. how does that nice. feel? Because at home, it's hard being okay, right at home. Nice listen, to pop your collar today, okay? Because today's your day, Romeo. All right. So if you're enjoying engaging with us as much as we do on YouTube, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all at Fox Soul, because the conversation it never stops. Now, Silento, the Atlanta rapper known for his hit song, Watch Me, also known as The Whip or The Nay Nay, was never able to do that dance. He was arrested on Monday and charged with murder in the shooting death of his 34-year-old cousin, according to authorities. The Cab County Police said in a statement on Twitter that the 23-year-old rapper, whose legal name is Ricky Hawk, was arrested in a suburb 
of Atlanta. The police statement says that he is currently in a county jail charged with murder in connection with the January 21st death of Frederick Rooks. Now, the statement didn't elaborate on the uh, circumstances of the death or Hawk's arrest, but the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reports that Hawk is being held without bond as of late Monday. A lot on this story uh, going on. So, you know, he was arrested twice last year. I don't know if you guys yeah, know. Mm -hmm. uh, he was arrested once for allegedly uh, driving 143 miles per hour, then another time for threatening people uh, with a hatchet while he ran through someone's house uh, yeah. looking for his girlfriend. Now, according to reports, they're saying that his family is like gathering together because um, they're saying that he uh, tried to commit suicide last year, mm -hmm. that he has, you know, severe mental, uh, mental illness for uh, years, depression, and things like that. So this is just such a sad, sad story. So, of course, um, you know, and then on top of the fact that the family is dealing with a loss in their family. So, the uh, one, you know, man. just try to, um, you know, be easy on the family. Like, uh, some of the comments are just, they are just, just terrible. Like, mm. I didn't even want to read them on Twitter because they're just such bad comments. Yeah. So just try to, try to keep the family, you know, lifted in this time because it's a really hard time. Any death within a family is yeah. bad. But, I mean, you yeah. talk about, you're dealing with people that are related in this situation. Yeah. And this is sad for me because Just Dance is a game that I play at my house to get my son off the couch, and this is oh, one of his favorite songs. Really? Oh, he likes to do the whip yeah. and nay-nay, but I don't know if we can keep doing that now. But I agree with you when they said there could have been some mental issues in yeah. the past because I saw those stories of why he was arrested before. And yeah. this is sad, man. You never know what someone is going through and when they need help. You well, know. you know, his publicist even came up um, and said because the, the video of him, like, running to the house, like, was viral and things like that. And his publicist was kind of like, you know, no one cared about the fact that he, that he that he was having a bipolar episode is what he calls it. Mm. They just cared about the fact that he was running in a house, you know, and, and made fun of it and things like that. So you just never know what's really going on behind the scenes. So, like I said, we're just going to just, you know, keep the positive vibes going for this family because they're going through a lot. Yeah. yeah. No, go ahead, bro. Well, I just, yeah, it's, it's obviously really, really sad. And also, again... The Sixth Amendment, like, we won't know exactly what has happened and what 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 happened, what transpired, yeah. and maybe we won't ever know. But we won't know really much until the trial. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is innocent until proven guilty. Mm. And so right now, yeah, just positive thoughts for a family that is suffering two sort of tragedies. Right yes, now. several ways. I agree. You're right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, Duke Booty, the pioneer rapper for, who co-wrote and appeared on Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five's classic The Message, number one on Rolling Stone's list of the 100 greatest hip-hop songs of all time, died Wednesday at the age of 69. Born Edward Fletcher, the rapper died at his home in Savannah, Georgia. The cause was in-stage congestive heart failure, his wife Rosita confirmed to Rolling Stone. Fletcher originally wrote the song, The Message, in 1980, detailing the struggles of inner city life amid a New York transit strike that year. Although the message is credited to Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, the song then titled The Jungle was the brainchild of Fletcher, who submitted a demo of the track while in the session as a musician for Sugar Hill Gang. Fletcher served as a member of Sugar Hill Gang Records house band, and I'm going to tell you something about this record, man. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how Keith from going on the one of the first rap songs Ooh. that I tried to learn growing up. I, I wrote it lyric for lyric, and I'm going to tell you, this is like seven minutes long, this song was. It is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I think still today Childhood it is Romeo so powerful. Was. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm, I'm interested. I would interested. love to know more. He actually posted a baby photo on his Instagram, and I was like, you look like you were bad back then. Oh, 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 well, you know, yeah, I was bad in several ways. But <laughs> at, at, you think about it, seven minutes long, yes. and they played every word they yeah. had to because still today that song resonates if you it. listen to the lyrics of that song. Yeah. And I read, wrote down lyrics then, and I still write notes now. People wonder, like, why do you still write? It's a habit. You have to. I, it's just what I do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just imagine the fans, though, like, you know, reciting a seven-minute song. Like, I don't know any song that I know verbatim that is that long. Like I knew it front to back. Really? Okay, yeah. we have to do a little special Black Report video insert. Maybe for the we'll promo, we have you, you know, recite yeah. the song in its entirety. May you rest in peace, for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dr. Anthony Fauci does not want the Super Bowl to turn into a super spreader. The nation's top disease expert says when it comes to Super Bowl parties during the pandemic, just lay low and cool it. He says now is not the time to invite people over for watch parties because of the possibility that they're infected with the coronavirus and could sicken others. Fauci says big events like Sunday's game in Tampa, Florida, are always a cause for concern over the potential for virus spread. It feels like um, every other week 
there's something else and some other reason why Whew. people are going to have big parties inside the house together. Man, people actually Every- hit me up like, yo, you no, we understand over 26 million people have been vaccinated. Uh, vaccinated. We understand that the numbers are going down when it comes to COVID-19 in some mm-hmm. areas. Not going to do it. Please. Yeah, we made it through the holidays. The last thing we need is for this weekend to bring those numbers back up. You guys, Super Bowl, like the actual Super Bowl is completely wholeheartedly giving me super spreader. Now, we know that 22 thousand people are going to be in the stands yes. at the Super Bowl. But we do know that those 7,500 uh, nurses and healthcare workers, they're going to be there. They were vaccinated. So, I mean, that, that that takes care of one third of the other people. But, you know, I just want to read off a couple of things that the uh, so Dr. Fauci he also said that he feels like the Super Bowl itself won't be a super spreader. He feels like it's the parties that are going to happen outside of. But I'm in thinking homes, about. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, I'm thinking about inside. I mean, you have people that are going to fly to where the Super Bowl is at. Like it's it's going to get crazy. But anyway, so a couple of things that the Super Bowl is doing to kind of tackle the coronavirus in their words are every fan at the statement uh, at the stadium, excuse me, they're going to get uh, those KN95 masks. So that is good. Everyone's going to get hand sanitizer. They're also going to get antibacterial wipes. They're also going to get a COVID-19 uh, safety card. And then everyone also has like to stay in their little section and stay six feet away. So that's what they feel like, you know, is going to help. But I'm just also just like, I don't know, 22,000 people. Like, you know, here's, yeah. here's the thing. Let me ask you a question, Romeo. Real question, right? I okay. mean, you, you might not want to answer this, but, like, you might not want to answer for yourself personally, but answer the question. Say, for example, you get the opportunity to go to the Super Bowl, right? Are mm-hmm. you going to uh, uh, turn it down? Say you have a symptom the day before the, the, the Super Bowl, right? I'm not, uh-huh. You're not, go- you, you not going to stay at home. I'm not going. I'm not you're going. You're not I'm, going, but you, I get what she's saying. You're you get what I'm saying. saying that there are people right. who are not exactly. going, who yeah. are going to go with saying. symptoms. Like, this exactly. is a, a chance yeah. of a lifetime. Exactly. I'm not going to let That's it go. That's why I said, Romeo, don't answer it for yourself personally, mm-hmm. but like for the average person, this is the chance of a lifetime, like you said, to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. If I feel a symptom, or if I, even if I know, you're still going to go to the Super Bowl, and you cannot tell me I otherwise. I would like to think that those people will be smart after seeing all these people I don't have passed away. I don't think so. And understand this, soulmates, this is a home game, technically, for Tampa Bay. The first time an NFL team has a home game for the Super Bowl. Oh, Imagine really cool, if yeah. Tampa Bay wins it. What are, what's going to happen in the streets of Tampa and, Bay? And Florida is. Uh, come on. You, you took guys. The words out of you my guys. Mind. So you see what I'm saying? You see what right. I'm saying? Like, Florida's already a suspect. We love ir- y'all, though. There are some irresponsible people out there in the yeah, world, man. and they will they will test it. But good luck to everyone. Yes. <laughs> Super Bowl weekend. Okay, now check it in with our YouTube soulmates here. Uh, Oliver says, I'm not sure what's going on with these young rappers, but mental illness, he- uh, mental illness, excuse me, is a real thing. Um, then a conversation about being a vegetarian and pescatarian broke out in the chat. I love when, like, little side chats happen that's like my favorite to chat i feel like i'm reading like a twitter thread um a lot of people talking about being a vegetarian and, and a pescatarian uh but one of our um soulmates here says we have to uh so, sorry nikki says i love having news reported by our people and you know mm. we got you monday through friday 4 yeah, p.m do. pst every day okay now stay right here